Hi guys, Jason Leonard here. I'm here with... Emily Ronaldo. We are here in Southern California at a beautiful uh, nature reserve. And we came out here to do some videos and we thought we would do a podcast for you. So this is Jason Leonard Unfiltered. Uh, and uh, we're super excited to join you guys today. Thank you for watching, listening to the podcast. We really appreciate it. If you're watching the video cast of this, uh, we chose background over lighting this time. <laughs> if we choose for lighting, we're going to, A, we're going to be squinting the whole time, and B, it's not as fun of a background. So if you're listening to the to podcast of this, um, we are in a place that has some beautiful trees, beautiful greenery. The grass is stunning. There's so many different hues all over. It's a really nice spot. Yeah, thanks to um, you know so much rain here. Cal California got unprecedented rain here early in the year, and it's led to just California blooming like you've never seen it before. And I've lived here my whole life, so. And Emily's now a Californian official. I know. She's an official Californian I now, guys. I just became a resident of California. I got the California plates and everything. Yep, it's California insurance plates address. She California is California life. She, California life. She <laughs> is completely California legit. SoCal baby, SoCal. So uh, yeah, she makes sure to mention SoCal. I love it because there's always a thing. You may you may know this, or you may not. I but do. You do. Yeah. There's a whole thing between Northern Californians and Southern Californians. Yep. SoCal wins, baby. Yeah. We're, <laughs> <laughs> we're down in Southern California, known as being very uh, laid back and uh, low key, and uh, yeah, except for Kardashians, of course. Up there in um, <laughs> up there in Northern California, and they're known for being. They're, they look down on us sometimes. They think we're a little wild and crazy. We think they're uh, a little of the opposite. But I, I'm sure we have people listening to this from Northern California, and I love them. So, just fun stuff. We get to travel all over the world, which gives us the opportunity to meet so many people. And you, what you go to learn is that most people are really cool. They're just a little different. I like that. So. Um, yeah, we're super excited, guys. Uh, thank you for your patience with the podcast. We got them going, and we wanted to get the first number of episodes out because you have to do that to be able to get onto iTunes and iHeartRadio and all these other things. And then we had a lot of work we had to get out, but now the podcasts are going to start coming out regularly again. And if you're listening to this, you've already been watching the, the episodes start to pop up, and so just super grateful for you. If you haven't checked out all the episodes, go to jasonlinner.com slash podcast. Also, I wanted to make sure you guys know we do have a blog. Where would they find that, Ms. Emily? My webmaster? <laughs> I am, too. I have gone through that website. Uh, you can go to his, uh, check out his blog at jasonlanier.com slash blog. Yeah, and uh, Miss Emily, um, has she, she really has taken on the role of being my webmaster. She is... I constantly go onto my website and see different changes. And she'll be... She'll text me. She's like, hey, take a look at your website. And, and then he made a change and broke the links that I made. And I said, hey. And he goes, yeah, now I'm messing with your website. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, you got to let me know. Now the links are broke. <laughs> that's, that's a true story. <laughs> so if I change a picture, if I do anything, I, I got to get approval. And <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, having your help is amazing. You, you you really bring so much help to what I do and what we do. So so let's let's let's, let's start. Yeah. Yeah. Let's start off this this podcast with a bang. Um People are wondering what in the world's going on with me shooting Canon and Olympus and all these others. What ended up happening was, to be brief, my brand needed to be able to expand more. As people automatically is start to assume that you can't come to a workshop unless you're a Sony shooter. Yeah, and over the years, as you know, you've gotten them. Hey, I, I'm not a Sony shooter. Is it still worth it for me to come to a workshop? Oh, yeah. As an educator, um... I need to be able to reach all brands in the market. And so when people are coming to the workshops and or sending me emails and or I think the biggest thing that you and I spoke about are the emails and the phone calls that you don't get. Mm -hmm. The ones that don't ask. That just assume. Since I only see Sony content, I guess I'd have to be a Sony shooter to be able to go to the workshop. And, you know, workshops is a big piece of what we do. And that's something to think about. And, and as an educator, like... This is the year of the mirrorless. You need to get out there and use and understand all of those different mirrorless systems so you feel confident giving people true and understandable feedback. Absolutely. And I'm so, so happy you brought that up because that's what led to the timing of it. Yeah. That's what led to the timing. Um, honestly, guys, I, I've said to you 
for whoever's watched me, I've said to you for years, people would say, oh, just wait until Canon and Icon come up with a full frame mirrorless. And I would always joke around. And But I was serious. I'd, I'd hold my mic real quick. Yeah. I'd go like this, put it to my mouth. I'd go. <laughs> I would tap my watch and I'd say, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. What made me choose Sony in the first place was the fact that they were the only full frame mirrorless option in the marketplace and me being a shooter there's nothing against crop sensor micro four thirds i love them all but i wanted to at least have a system that i could grow into and have it be a full frame um and as many of you know who are listening or and or watching this what ended up happening was mosquitoes what ended up happening was panasonic canon nikon all came out with full frame mirrorless last year the end of the mid to latter end of 2018 and so when we looked at it from a business standpoint and everything else that we were doing it just made sense it made sense it made sense to be able to shoot what we needed to shoot for the youtube channel it made sense to be uh able to speak to other people about their camera systems too like when people come to the workshops a lot of times they'll hand me their camera and they'll say jasonize it yeah fix my camera i'm having these problems with my camera and for me to only know the sony system um, and I love the Sony system. I'm still a Sony shooter, but we're, we're broaching this topic because people have been asking, like we've been putting out so many different videos. People are like, what is going on? But how can you give someone your true and honest opinion about a type of equipment or, or gear if you haven't used it? Uh, <laughs> I'm so happy you said that because it's so true. Yeah, you're here for... All of the fans, all of you guys. I really am. And what you may not realize is I wasn't tempted. Guys, don't forget. Please don't forget. I switched from Nikon to Sony. So it's not like I don't switch systems or it's not like I don't look at other things. I have. I was never tempted to look at anything outside of Sony simply because there wasn't anything I was interested in. Right. There was no full frame mirrorless. And I don't, I love DSLR shooters, but... I'm not a DSLR guy. I really believe so fundamentally in the mirrorless platform that anything else was just going backwards for me, not making fun of people. Just for me, I didn't want to go back into DSLRs. I did that for the first half of my career. The second half and f and beyond is going to be mirrorless. And so the last thing I wanted to do was, okay, yeah, Fuji's awesome. And I, I'm going to try out Fuji too. But from a, from a project video standpoint for, for the followers out there, but you're right, Emily. I mean, I, I was never tempted to look at other stuff. And yeah, now I am. I'm curious. I mean, I'm, I'm very curious by nature. Of you, course. You know, you know me. You, yeah. I, I drive people crazy with my questions. I'm Why? 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 <laughs> why? Why does it is? Why? 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 <laughs> you know, and you guys got to understand, too, I was getting a ton of questions at the end of last year. Hey, you're going to try the system. Hey, what's going on? You're going to try the system. And I'm like, you know, it's the right time. My favorite part about the way you tried. So, so far... Um, Jason has tried the Olympus system and the Canon system, and he played with the Nikon a little bit of, uh, in during the fall. Um, yeah, for a day, yeah. For a day, but it was what I I loved how you approached both uh, using both systems. When I say both, I mean Olympus and Canon because you had a little bit more time with it. You you just got it out and you started to figure it out and trial and error. How does this work? What happens when I combine this option this way? You weren't like digging out the manual, trying to figure it all out. You really dove right into and uh, figured out how to use it on your own. I thought that was really cool. Thank you. And, and brave. Yeah. We we're doing it on camera. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and we had a studio rented. It's like, he's like, okay, well I need to figure out how to use this right now. <laughs> and that's been the fun part for me too, because what you've been able to watch is what I did with Sony. Yeah. You're being able to watch me redo the process again. And that's what I've done. And let me just say one thing for the record, guys. She knows me, and, and people who are close to me know me as well. I need a challenge. I need a challenge. It's why, for those who don't know my background, I left the hotels as the hotel industry is a very successful hotel executive. I left a job that when I was at the latter end of my career when I left, I was paying multi, multi hundred thousands of dollars a year to do that job. And I left it to become a photographer. <laughs> then I just left Nikon and I came to Sony. So this is very natural for me to gravitate, to investigate. But you're not leaving. You're not leaving Sony. No, I'm not leaving Sony. I'm just... If you are, <laughs> I, I want all your gear. <laughs> Hand it over. 
Yeah, that's true. That's no, true. You're just playing with other things. I am just playing with other things. And let's face it, guys, in the world of YouTube, you know, being able to touch other gear, play with other gear, relate to all of your fans and not just certain segments is very good for your channel. And if you want to grow your channel, and we also believe YouTube is very much a part of the future, not only the present, but the future. If you want to grow your channel, you you have to talk about gear. So that's a great segue into why we've been shooting Canon and and Fu and I almost said Fuji. That's coming. But Canon and Olympus and these other ones. So just to kind of give you guys a, a heads up, Olympus sent me a camera, gosh, a year and a half ago. <laughs> Uh, no, no joke. They sent me the Olympus OMD2 um, a year and a half ago. Um, we did the Olympus project, which is where we took the OMD Mark II um, and uh, had 25 millimeter f1.2 lens and uh, went and shot with it just you know a month ago. And what's fun for me is I've never, guys, that's the thing. I never, I've never played with Micro Four Thirds. I mean, people come to a workshop, I'll kind of look at it, but. For me to be able to play with it and to look at the Micro Four Thirds and see what it can do, now when somebody comes to workshop, I can give them that honest feedback. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so is a Micro Four Thirds camera more of a crop than just like a crop sensor, like the Sony's crop sensor? I think yeah, it is. absolutely. Like lot, so right? yeah, so if you look at like a full frame, uh -huh. a crop's going to go in like this. Like and then a micro four thirds goes in quite a it's bit. It's like a lot, a lot. It's a lot, a lot. Yeah, it was super funny. I read a comment on um, I'm jumping a, a recent picture that we did in the studio with the bubbles, and someone was like, "How far back did you have to stand to get her whole body in focus?" <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, you're probably far away." <laughs> yeah, that is funny. Um, but we did a number of shoots with it. The Olympus did a great job. Is it? Um, a couple shoots that are already published. One yeah. is the you can go to jasonlanier.com slash blog slash red queen. Um Yep, that's a great shoot. Yeah, that one was really cool. That was the first one we released. Uh you did some really, really awesome things um with light. Loved the way you lit. It was like a rotolite palooza in there. Yeah, and we rent we went down to F D photo studio in Los Angeles and we rented it for a good four or five days. That was nuts. Remember they had that mixer and then people were interrupting our shoot and Yeah, yeah. Ooh, we have one more that still needs to be published. This is the bell bottoms one. You guys are in for a treat with that. Yeah. But then the other shoot that was uh just recently released was the bubbles shoot. Um please share the blog post because I didn't write it. Jasonlinear.com slash blog slash bubbles it's bubbles <laughs> it is bubbles <laughs> perfect i could have guessed that. <laughs> so um what's really cool about that is you know i took a shot of miss emily and she just killed it of course thank you and she has these daggers let's see the daggers she got the daggers they're just pointy nails so they dull out after a few days yeah but she had her she had her hand pointed up and she hit the uh, one of the bubbles. This is yeah during the bubble shoot. During the bubble shoot. So wait, how did we even get the bubbles? Maybe someone hasn't watched it yet. Yeah, so we were down in uh, L. A. L. A. Right yeah. outside FD Photo Studio. Yeah, and uh, that's something we like to do. Is you know if we're in the area, we'll go and look for props and stuff around the area. So we went down there. We found sunglasses <laughs> for you. Oh yeah, super cheap. L. A. Yeah. is like a prop palooza. It's insane. Prop a palooza. You prop -a -palooza. better. <laughs> you better believe it, sister. <laughs> And so we went down to L.A. and we, we got sunglasses. We've got uh, we got the bubble guns. And they play this funky little song. If you guys haven't watched the video, go to my YouTube channel. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Click on the video that says Raining Bubbles and you see the picture of her. But what's really cool is with a Micro Four Thirds camera, with the right lighting, I, I emphasize that part, that with the right lighting, but with the right lighting, we were able to get mm. and take a shot that got you on the back cover of Digital Photo, Photo Magazine. Yeah, it was that was pretty cool. That was amazing. It was very cool. Yeah, it was really awesome to to be able to accomplish that. So, so thanks to you and Rotolite for making that happen. Well, well, it wasn't all us. Oh, thank you. Without without your amazing styling and and posing and everything we do together, it wouldn't. It's it's just such a team effort. Thank you. And what was really cool about that was Jason had his own bubble gun, and he's you know hey perks of shooting one-handed so he's 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 holding the camera <laughs> That's for in one sure, guys. hand he's holding the bubble gun with another and just just you know underneath the camera so it would go and frame the bubble he was shooting the bubbles at me this uh made like a really cool like bokeh bubbles would you describe that yeah How because you describe the, that? the yeah because i had the focus on your face 
but then I had the bubbles coming in front, so they're inherently out of focus. Mm -hmm. So you're creating atmosphere. Okay. And you're creating a lot of beautiful bokeh and everything else. And, and honestly, the way the light was hitting, too, bubbles are always amazing. And I got this idea from shooting weddings mm. because people, the bride and groom would run out after the e wedding on a grand farewell, and people would blow bubbles. Awesome. So you'd be able to see the light catch the bubbles. And their bubbles for photography are just amazing. So, yeah. So then I ha held the bubble gun and I was shooting the bubble gun toward my face. And again, uh, we were releasing the inner child, and I was just <laughs> playing and playing and ah, you know, you lifting my fingers. So job of. Thank you. Um, lifting my finger up, I was trying to pop the bubble. You know, make like little cutesy faces, like ooh, you know, pursing your lips, popping the bubbles. So. Yeah, it was super cool. I was, I'm grateful that that made it on the back of the magazine. Yeah, congratulations, Miss Emily. Thank you. Your first, your first cover. That's that's quite an, an honor. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Were there any? Can we talk about some pros and challenges uh, with the Olympus? With the Olympus, um, what's what's great about it? Um, clearly, you you're losing light when you shoot a micro four thirds. Is that great? That's not great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some challenges. That's not great. At the good folks at Olympus, um, thank you for sending me the camera. Uh, I will send it back. I promise. It's only been a year and a half. Oh but my gosh, you still have it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. She asked for it last week too. But um, thank you to Jennifer for sending it. It's been amazing. Um, Shawa, that did it. It really is a very neat camera. What attracted me to the Olympus in the first place was. Um, that it's supposed to be more weather sealed. And so that's something that we definitely take, took a look at. Um, the lenses are very, very nice. They focus well. I don't like the phony, the, the phony. I don't like the focus system as much as the Sony's, but you're going to hear that. That's going to be a, cr a common refrain. I don't like any focus system as much as I like the Sony's. Yeah. Sony is still the king of focus, in my opinion. Um, the, the cameras are compact. It feels very good in the hand. I love the screen on it. Um, and, you know, the, the most, again, I'm going to go back to this, but we were at a workshop in London just last month, and somebody walked up to me with an Olympus and said, hey, I know you just shot this. Can you help me with it? And that was cool. You were able to confidently say yes, take it. And, and I, had a re I had a much better grasp on the menu systems and everything else, mm -hmm. and so that was really cool, I just got to say. It's rewarding. And now I have people asking me questions about Olympus and, and Canon and everything else, and it for the long-term viability of what we're doing is a great place to be. I love that. So then after we did all those projects, and you guys can go to jasonlinear.com slash Olympus Project. I believe so. <laughs> if not, that will that is what it will be. Um, <laughs> you got to write some text in there still. It's disabled, but it'll be visible for you guys by the time we get this up. <laughs> jasonlinner.com slash Olympus Project. You can see the videos and the shots that we've done with it. And uh, I got to say, the Olympus did a great job. Did a really, really great job. I was very impressed with it. So, so what system did you get next? Well, then the good folks at B&H Photos sent me Canon. The they, great folks. The great, the great folks. folks at B&H. At B&H Photos sent me the Canon EOS R. And what lenses did they give you? They gave me the 50 millimeter 1.2, the 24 to 105 millimeter f4 and the uh 28 to 70 f2 which which one's your favorite well <laughs> they're all awesome but that 28 to 70 is like <laughs> he really likes it uh, like uh like i would almost switch to canon just for that lens <laughs> i know that sounds ridiculous but comparing that there there's such a distinct difference between that and any of the 24 to 70 f 2.8s it's a beautiful lens. It's expensive and big as hell, but it is a crazy great lens. The colors coming out of the Canon are amazing. Focus system uh, is very nice. It's not as sh it's not as um, doesn't focus as far away as the Sony's do. One thing that's nice about the Canon system is it does automatically track the eye autofocus without needing to depress a secondary button. Mm. Sony's adding that, even as we speak, uh, firmware updates to uh, rectify that issue. Um, that's something they should have done a long time ago, but they're doing now, which is great. Um, but the Canon system, uh, it, it is, we have produced some off-the-charts work with that 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 camera. Well, it's really great the amount of time you've had it. That has, <laughs> seriously, that's played a huge role at, like, you know, us putting it through the paces. 
and the Nikon you had for like an hour, Olympus, you used it a little bit. I know you had it forever, but you only used it a little <laughs> bit. Now we really got to use that Canon, so I think that that's pretty awesome. So what are some uh, Canon shoots you want to talk about? Gosh, we went, we did an event with uh, GPPA and uh, went out to Georgia for the Georgia Pro- uh, Professional Photographers of America. And we did an event with them, which was really, really cool. Because what we're able to do is um, teach at their photo works event. We did a four day boot camp where we did photo you know photo editing, we did calling, we did business, and we did two days of shooting and uh really got out there and had a great time. We did a a shoot at uh bus graveyard, which is really, really cool with off camera flash. We did that with the godox um really, really cool. We did a shoot at an abandoned pool uh we released a video with another model named Kristen. Uh, and we have another video cam- coming out with Miss Emily that we did at the pool as well. Um, we went out to Death Valley after WPPI. This is all in February. Went out to WPPI, went out to Death Valley and did a natural light shoot of Miss Emily with a 24 to 105 that was awesome. Awesome. Where can they see that? All of it's on the YouTube channel. But you can also go to jasonlanier.com slash canon project to see all of this. And the culmination, what 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 we're doing with these projects is this, guys. The we're doing all these separate shoots, and they're done for a reason. We do certain ones with certain lenses at certain times, off-camera flash, LED lighting, a variety of lights, yep, variety of times a day. Absolutely. And then what's going to be the summary, the culmination of all these different types of shoots? Hell, we did a freaking black light shoot. Oh yeah. With the Canon, which is crazy. What you're going to see is a complete review that includes all of these shoots with a sit down and me talking about the gear and really trying to help people out there, guys. Look, I'm blessed. I am blessed. I I have the ability to get my hands on virtually any gear that I want to get my hands on. Ask yourself this. If you were a photographer, wouldn't you do the same? I mean, seriously, wouldn't you do the same? I have the opportunity to play with any camera brand I really want to right now, so we are. And I am taking that responsibility and what I'm trying to do is help people make right decisions for themselves because when I was a photographer before I was where I'm at now, I didn't have that that ability to get my hands on gear, to go out and test it. So I had to trust opinions and what we're trying to do is create the most well-trusted um, library of videos and reviews that you guys can get, you know, get a hold of so you can make the best decisions for you. That's the goal and we hope you guys like it. So, gosh, we did a black light shoot. We've done off-camera flash, Death Valley, natural light, the Urbex pool. What else are we doing, Amy? Mm. I don't know. Oh, I even went down to the beach with my sons. This is where we oh, dropped yeah. the A9, and I compared the 28 to 70 Canon versus the 24 to 72.8 G Master. We did a comparison of the 50 millimeter video uh, lenses. So we did a comparison of the 50 millimeter 1.2 by Canon versus the 50 millimeter 1.4 by Sony. Yeah, we forgot about the whole Blitz factory. I was just gonna say Neon, we were in London at the Neon factory, the Blitz factory at Neon place, it's really cool. We did a, a, a white balance test between, yeah, this was fun. between the Sony A7 III, I think it was, the either A7 III, A7R III, Versus the night the R three, yeah. Okay, we did so we did a could be wrong. a color test between three cameras. We upped the ante, so we did the Sony A seven R three versus the Canon EOS R versus the Nikon Z six. One of my buddies had the Nikon with him, and he's like, "You want to throw this into the mix?" We're like, "Sure." It was crazy. That was that's fun. That's gonna be a fun video to get out. It was so cool to have completely the same settings and then see how the images were different we were just like in awe yeah (laughs) and i'm very eager to see how they turned out Uh, i'm very eager to see it myself so yeah just lots of really really cool stuff um lots of really cool stuff i know this podcast has been kind of heavy on gear but people have a lot of questions about what we've been doing with the gear so we didn't want to over gear you guys but but um that that's kind of a rundown as to what we're doing and why and uh, we hope it makes sense to you out there. So the sun is setting. They're going to lock my car in if we don't um, <laughs> get out of here on time. But we've had a wonderful time. We hope you guys have enjoyed this. Again, sorry a little bit heavy on the gear. 
if that uh, is problematic for you, but we've had a fantastic time. I'm never trying to be the fastest. I always want to be the best. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's better to be consistent and have a long time with, with what you do versus trying to be a one hit wonder. Yeah. And that's what we don't want to do. So. so if you guys want to read about any of our recent shoots, you can go to jasonlanier.com slash blog. Yep. If you want to learn from this very talented guy, uh, you, can, you can go to jasonlanier.com slash register to see our upcoming workshops. Yeah. So what are we going to talk about? What, what are some of the things we're going to talk about in our next blog? A couple little teasers, guys, that um, you can be excited to listen for next time. Uh, Jason got spray painted in the face, and boy, <laughs> is that a story for you. <laughs> She's not joking. I really, I mean, not just a tiny bit, like spray painted. Like if he wasn't this wearing face. glasses, he would be blind. Yeah. Be legendary glasses that just go down into down into the history books. This is another one like cutting my my knee open. This is this is how we make legends. <laughs> You are quite a little uh, a caretaker there, Dirk. Yeah, my best. You do a great job. There we go. Any last words? Last words. Thank you, Emily, for helping to scrub my face clean. Thank you, Dirk, for providing acetone uh, face wipes and mo uh, Nivea refreshingly soft moisture lotion to uh, reintroduce some moisture to my face. And thank you to. Uh, that very kind gentleman, uh, what's his name, Freak Piper, for spray painting me and assaulting me in the London uh, Tunnel, in the Leak Graffiti Tunnel here in London. And uh, it's very nice of you to act so mature and so uh, hospitable to, uh, to travelers to your country. Thank you so much, and we look forward to uh, publishing your, de your deeds online. Please. Graffiti spray paint. Yeah, London was wild. London was wild. It was the whole Brexit. They're having like a mass pandemonium over there. Emily was doing a shoot, and there was an old lady. There was a lady in the alleyway taking her pants off and yeah, like going know, to the bathroom. Going, and yeah, it was. It was. We'll it. save that for <laughs> next time. <laughs> trust me. Trust us when we say we have been very busy and really. Um, we've had the time of our lives and, and it's not slowing down. It's getting faster and faster. And we're so grateful that you're along for the ride. So yeah, thanks for staying around. Absolutely. So guys, make sure to, uh, subscribe to the podcast. You can do it on iTunes. You can do it on Spreaker. You can do it on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, whatever your, your, uh, best one is. And you can always find all of them at jasonlinear.com slash podcast. Check out the blog, check out the YouTube channel, check her out. Thanks. On Instagram, where, Miss Emmy? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at mexplores. That's E-M dot explores. And I'm at Jason Lanier Photography. El Bastardo. El Bastardo Jefe Grande. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, like a, sounds like a new dish at Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time. Keep shooting. Never give up on your dreams. Find the right gear that works for you. And remember. Remember what? You only have one chance to get it right, mother. Okay. Peace.